Hey guys, Yankee here, and today I'm going to be giving my thoughts on In Another World with My Smartphone Volume 2. This volume, we're, we're two volumes in, and this one is basically already a short story volume. Um, and it's even broken up, like the chapters are like the first, I think the first chapter is just like a day-to-day -day life part one, second chapter has a different title, and then the third chapter is like day-to-day -day life part two. Uh, so we're already just into slice of life stuff, and last volume, I think, first volume, it's the only previous volume, um, I, I had in, I was, I enjoyed it well enough, but I was kind of, eh, it was alright, I wasn't feeling it as much. Uh, I flew through this volume, now that it's just silly slice of life stuff, like, I don't know, like, the last volume was pretty slice of life too, but something about this one just felt, uh, I don't know, I, I enjoyed this one more. Uh, so let's go through my notes here. Uh, first chapter is, again, like each chapter this is sort of like a standalone, not even standalone, it's like a bunch of short stories almost in each chapter. Because um, again, this is a 200 and something page book and each chapter is like 60 pages. Um, so the first chapter is uh, about Toya and the girls, just sort of their, like a, a story between him and each one of them. Um, so the first one is, he's out with Yai, um, they find a missing girl, and they help her find, like, her mother, right? Um, and he's also, like, working on his magic. Um, so he was trying to search for the girl's mother with his spells, uh, it didn't quite work, so he imbued his cell phone with the search spell, so now he can, like, go onto his phone map and just search for something and have, like much larger larger range so uh we get a bit more phone in this volume especially these first couple like this first chapter um where he's just messing with his phone a lot which is good because uh, smartphone is right in the title and there wasn't actually a whole lot of that in the first volume um so first chapter yai and the missing girl second chapter uh Linz buys a spell scroll and she's just trying to figure out like how to do the spell and uh, Toya brings her out to like the woods and she trains and she uses up all her magic and collapses. Uh, and this goes on for a few days and we learn that uh, spells are written in like a different language. The name of the spell is in a language that uh, people in this world don't understand. So they don't, they don't know what like, they know the name of a, the spell but they don't know what it translates to. So it's like, all right, I bought this water spell. Um, I don't know exactly what the name of it is. It's but it's some sort of powerful water attack. So I'm trying to figure out how to do it with this incan incantation. Uh, and so Toya is able to read the title of the spell. Um, and this is this is a problem that comes in with translation. Like, it's in the thing, it says it's written in English. And so I'm wondering if in the original Japanese it was also in English, or if it was like in Japanese and changed to English for the translation, or what. Um, but the spell Linz is trying to learn is Bubble Bomb. And Toya sort of explains, tells her what the actual name of the spell is and sort of what that would be. Like, all right, a bubble, like when you blow a bubble and then a bomb, like it explodes. Perfect. Uh, and so Linz learns the spell. Cool. Uh, third story, L's. Um, what was the start of this one? I'm trying to think. All I can remember is, uh, oh, they, they did like a fight. They fought like a monster and she messed up her gauntlets. Um, so she needed new gauntlets to fight, because she punches things. Um, so Toya takes her to the weapons store where he got, uh, his coat, and they find some new gloves. And then on the way back, uh, she looks into, like, a window of, like, a clothing store and sees, like, a dress, and he buys it for her. And all the other girls get jealous that, uh, she got a gift while they didn't. Uh, and that's that one. Um, I, I don't remember which story it was. It was the Lin's one or the L's one. Um, but he also uh, did a new... Or, like, he's able to use his phone in a new way where he can basically spy. He's got, like, a security camera almost on his phone where he can, like, open the camera thing and, like, uh, move it to be in, like, different rooms. Because in the... Um, the inn, he used it to look through the wall of his room into... I think Linz's room, so I think this was part of the second story, where uh, he started to see her changing, and then, like, got out of there. Um, so again, more phone stuff. Uh, and then, I think this is the final part, I think the rest of the story is all about, like, the rest of this first chapter is all about this, is, um, 
Toya gets a message from the king and says, "Hey, I, I gotta. I want to give you a title." Um, so Toya and Yumina go to see the king. Uh, he offers Toya a title as like a duke or something. I don't. I don't remember what the title was going to be. Uh, Toya refuses, and then they have like. They do a ceremony where it's like, all right, you don't have to accept it. We got to go through this whole, uh, like, ceremony thing. And you can reject it there because it would look bad if I just, if I didn't try, right? So they do the ceremony. He rejects the noble title. And then the king's like, all right, cool. But I got, I got a house for you. Take the house because the least I can do. So Toya gets a new house. We move into a new house. Um, we get a bunch of help. We get a couple of maids. We get a butler. We get, what is it, like a... Uh, chef and like a gardener and then some guards like a bunch of characters just get thrown in there I don't remember any of their names I got uh, the only one I remember is Lime, Lame L-A-I-M because he is the butler he has a brother named Lame L-E-I-M who was in the first volume he was um, Sue is that her name uh, he was is it Sushi I don't remember uh, the blonde little girl on the cover of the first volume um He's her butler. And so Lame worked for the king. L Lame? I don't, I don't know how to pronounce the names. I apologize. Uh, he worked for the duke. So um, he works here. And then there's a couple maids that'll be important again later on. Um, and that's the first chapter. It's just like a bunch of little short stories, basically. Uh, second chapter is also like a bunch of little short stories, kind of. But like at least it has like an overarching plot that we're moving through. Uh, so basically... Oh, I forget what the kingdom is. Um, Belfast, I think? Um, the kingdom of Belfast wants to uh, basically have a conversation with the king of Mismede. M-I-S... or M Yeah, M-I-S-M-E-D-E. -E. Uh, so they want to basically chat with them. They're, I forget exactly the standing of their nations, but like they're on decent terms, but they're not like really close allies or something like that. So basically, like, all right, Toya and the girls, we want you to go. Um, the Olga, who is, like, um, from this country, she came in the first volume. She was the one that was accused of trying to poison the king, right? Um, she's going back, and they're accompanying her. Uh, and in this chapter, we just get, like, uh, we travel for a little bit. We fight a dragon, which is cool. Um... Toya and Linz basically take down the dragon on their own, like, um, Yai and, uh, Els and Yumina help a little bit. No, Yumina does not help. She goes to the castle. They use teleport to get her out of there. Um, I think Yai cuts up its eye. Els chops off one of its wings. Um, or no, Linz does. Els just punches things. She doesn't have that ability. Um, but basically they kill a dragon. Um, and then we get to the kingdom and we meet a new character. Well, we meet a lot of new characters. We meet the king, whose name I don't remember. Um, he fights uh, Toya and loses, and Toya steals his uh, null spell. Or doesn't steal, but he copies it. Um, I forget what it's called, but it's almost like an upgraded version of Els' boost ability. Um, at least that's how they describe it in the thing, where it just like enhances your physical abilities. Um, we meet another new character called Lean, and her stuffed bear Paula. Lean is a fairy. Uh, she's hundreds of years old. She knows quite a few null spells herself, including one called Program. Uh, Paula is a stuffed bear that she uses Program on a lot, and over, like, hundreds of years, it's become almost alive. That's how many different, like, uh, things she's programmed into it. Um, they talk. Lean is also the um, uh, teacher of this, the um, magician in Belfast, the one that Toya made the glasses for that can read like ancient magic language. Um, so we get some mention of that. Uh, she'll come back in at the end. Um, all right, <laughs> this is the silly part. Um, and this series gets more silly as we go on. I can't wait to get to those volumes. But Toya makes some guns. So they killed the dragon. Um, a village got completely destroyed by this dragon. So they're like, we'll, we'll just leave all of the dragon here, and you can like sell it and rebuild your village. Uh, they gave him a horn, um, and so he took that horn and used it to make a gun uh, with a sword on the end, uh, and then he ended up making, I think, Yumina and Linz a gun as well. Um, 
human underlings have not used them yet. Uh, Toya used it a couple times, um, and he's using like programming stuff to like uh, instant reload it and stuff like that, and it's just silly. Um, okay, and now back to the maids. Uh, Cecil and Lapis. Um, so they were two maids hired by uh, Lame, L-A-I-M. I don't know how to pronounce it. Lame, I think. I'm just going to call him Lame. And if I'm wrong, whatever. Um, basically, when they got the house, Lame was there. He's like, all right, you're going to need help. Allow me to go hire them. He brought back the two maids. Um, for this entire trip, they've been, f like, Toya and Kohaku, the tiger, have been feeling like they're being followed. During the fight with the dragon, a knife comes out of nowhere and stabs um, the dragon in an eye. And so we learned that the two maids that were hired are actually part of, like, Belfast's, like, CIA organization, and they're there to basically watch over Yumina. Um, she's the princess, so the king's obviously going to want people to watch over her. Cool. Um, and that's, that's it. That's all about them. That's basically the whole second chapter, too. It's the trip to Mizmead, and then just meeting some new characters, um, establishing relations. Um, we get... Uh, the king and the duke, I think they come to Ms. Mead with Toya's uh, gate ability. Um, and then Toya invents like a, a little tiny mirrors that people can pass messages through, right? Um, which get brought up a lot. Uh, and I don't know, I assume they'll be kind of relevant later, but like uh, instantly being able to send mail to someone is very convenient. So I assume that's being introduced so it can just be used as like an easy something easy later down the line. Uh, and that's it for the second chapter. It's all about Ms. Mead, really. Uh, third chapter is more slice of life stuff. Um, in the first volume, I talked about, like, I think I mentioned this, like, how one of the things I remember from this is Toya just making a bicycle, and then the Duke and the King being really interested in learning how to ride bikes. Um, that's not as prevalent in this as I remember it being, um, but I, I don't know why that stuck out in my head so much. Um, but Toya builds a bike, the Duke comes over to visit, he sees the bike, and he wants a bike. <laughs> and so Toya's just making bicycles. Uh, and it's silly, and it's fun. Um, and again, this second, this third chapter, which is just more slice-of-life short story, so it's Toya building a bike, uh, the Duke learning to ride the bike. And then the second one is Toya going to buy something. Um, I forget exactly what he was going to buy, but he went to the guild and took some money out of his bank account, uh, and he got robbed by a pickpocket. The pickpocket was a little girl named uh, Renee. Uh, Toya feels bad for her, picks her up, uh, and now she is working at his house as a maid. And we get set up for something that'll probably come down later in the line, where uh, her father was an adventurer that died. All she, ha her mother died when she was born. All she has is like a little necklace with a symbol on it. It's like a griffin. Um, so she's potentially royalty. Uh, they mentioned another uh, kingdom, and I don't remember what it was called, but it's one that Belfast is not on particularly good terms with right now. Um, but she might have some sort of connection to a royal family over there. So I assume we'll pick that back up uh, another time. Uh, and then towards the end, we get Lean back. She has come to talk to Toya, because after he left, a crystal monster attacked a village in Miss Mead somewhere. And it took them quite a while to defeat it, and that's similar to the crystal monster that uh, the group fought in Volume 1. Um, the difference is the Volume 1 crystal monster was like a bug, uh, the, the one that Lean and soldiers and stuff fought was like a snake. So she came to ask about that, and asks them to go to Ishin, which is in uh, this world, it's basically Japan, it's where Yai's from. Um, because there's some sort of... I forget exactly why she wants to go to Ishin, but there's some connection there to these crystal creatures, which she calls the Freys, um, which is like an ancient uh, tale passed down among fairies about these crystal monsters. Um, and then this volume ends with them teleporting to Ishin. Uh, so next volume, we're going to start right there. Like, I don't think the first volume had like a cliffhanger like that, but this one has like a direct cliffhanger. Um... And yeah, and then we get a couple of interlude stories. These are just, like, not really important, I don't think. Um, they feel like there's something that's just like, all right, we're making... I don't know if these were in the original web novel, or if there's something like, all right, we're making a printed volume of this. Can you do, like, a couple of little uh, new stories 
to put at the back of the book. And so they're not really too relevant. Like, they pick up on things that were in the, or the volume, or at least the first one does. So the first story, Interlude 1, is called A Day in Mizmead, where uh, Toya and Yumina bring Sue and some, like, knights and stuff uh, to Mizmead. So there they see uh, Olga, and I think his name is Leon. Uh, he's a knight who has a crush on Olga. And in the main story, uh, Toya gave him a couple of those mirrors that you can use to instantly send messages and stuff. Um, and so this volume, like, or this little story at the end, picks up on that, where it's, it's something that didn't really need to be fleshed out or explained, but, like, it's there so they can. So this is him taking Olga out on a date and eventually basically giving her the mirrors so they could send letters, because he's going back to Belfast and she's staying here in this mead. Um, and that's basically it. There's a little... Uh, section where the king um, is just out and about because the king of Ms. Mead uh, likes to fight and so he's just out and about looking for trouble basically he's like alright I heard there's some uh, ruffians around these parts I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show them who's boss right uh, so that's the first short story it's okay uh, second interlude two, uh, slime castle this one's goofy um, uh, they get a quest that there's a castle with a bunch of slimes in it, and they want them to eradicate the slimes. Uh, and so in this castle, there was a wizard who was experimenting on slimes, and he created a, a whole bunch of them, like goofy ones. Like, okay, this one does, like, electricity. Okay, this one, uh, what is it, lotion, the lotion slime, where it's just really slippery. Um, this one is a metal slime that turns into, like, a metal pan and falls on your head uh, when you open a door, like in a Japanese, like, gag. Um... And then eventually we get to the corpse of the wizard, and then there are four slimes that can take on the appearance of human women. Um, and the girls uh, already didn't like slimes. They had their clothes melted away by slimes. They see four slimes that turned into replicas of them, except naked, and they just burn the castle down. Um, yeah, that's volume two. A lot of slice of life stuff, but very fun. Um, I think the interludes are the weakest part. Um, because, again, they feel just sort of tacked on and, like, like I don't need them. Like, the short stories in, like, the first chapter and the third chapter all feel relevant. Like, Renee, who could be completely random, it's like, well, now she's a part of the household and she's got, like, a plot thread set up for later down the line. The things like that. Like, I guess the bicycles are kind of a pointless <laughs> um, side plot, but that's fun. Uh, but, yeah. Good volume. I like this one a lot better than the first one. I'm excited for volume three. Um, I think I only read up through volume five when I initially read this series. Um, so I'm really excited to keep moving through. Because um, I, I don't really remember much of volume three, but I, do, I remember a little bit of what happens in Nishin. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.